in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Secrets for a Successful Life. I'm Sharon Benjamin. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition. For this edition, I am speaking with William and Baudrian Ray, co-owners of Ruby's Academy in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Welcome and thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Listen, I think this is just amazing that you two work together, husband and wife, <laughs> with this academy. What was the impetus for your starting this academy? Well, William and I have um, three children. Yes. And many years ago, when um, we both were um, young professionals, uh, I was a, I'm a former school psychologist and William worked for the USDA. We had a difficult time when our very youngest was um, needing to um, require preschool services, finding a good fit for him and having two other kids who were very young under kindergarten age we found that um, there just wasn't a good fit for our family. So with that in mind, we decided that this would be an area that we would be, um, would be very rewarding. And um, really, I guess we started as um, a way to make things better for our children. Yeah. So I, I'll get to some of the other meat of the academy, but how is it that you two work so well together? Husband and wife. <laughs> Takes a lot of prayer. <laughs> a lot of tolerance. Yes, yes. And there's a lot of give and take. And we have to understand the strengths and weaknesses of each other. And when we recognize that and recognize that we're on one accord and working toward one common goal, then we can get everything done that needs to be done in just a day. Yes. But it's one day at a time. That yes. is awesome. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. Randall and I have, my husband and I have some other friends who mm -hmm. husband and wife businesses that have worked together for mm -hmm. years. So what is the main objective for Ruby's Academy? I would say our main objective is just to um, produce children who are first and foremost good citizens, just good people, um, good character and all and the academics will come. So we definitely put out children who are, um, have very strong skill sets and do well after they leave our program. But our main objective is to produce children who have, are good human beings and care about others. Now there are a number, there are scores of uh, daycare centers, childcare centers in the area. How do you all see yours set apart from all of the others? I would say that we're a little less um, corporate, um, being that we are locals and we um, have young children of our own and we've lived it. I think we can relate to our parents very well. I think we also um, are just driven to make a difference. And because of the size of our program, we're able to have a more intimate relationship with our parents, with our children, um, and really care about them as beyond, <clears throat> beyond school. Um, issues. We care about their families and what's going on with their families and things of that nature. So what is uh, the general teacher-child ratio here? Generally we are a little below um, South Carolina. Um, South Carolina of course has their own um, standard um, but typically we are at least one to two children below whatever what the ratio is. Um, for instance in our, um, in our um, pre-k program they can have up to probably about 17 kids and one teacher. We have um, 11, you know, things of that nature. So we try to always stay below in, in the um, state ratio. So you, <clears throat> although you are a daycare, child care center, you look to the South Carolina Correct. standards and use Correct. some of that guidance? Correct. Um, as far as regulations, we are regulated by three entities, which would be the South Carolina Department of Social Services, the Fire Marshal, DHEC. So we have yes, to yes. always, yes, yes, always have to be um, in compliance in those areas. As far as um, curriculum, we utilize the South Carolina Early Standards um, along with the creative curriculum um, and those two we utilize to pull our goals and objectives for the program. So William, you came from a different background. Uh, mm -hmm. Audrey and you're from an educational yes. background. Yours is yes. different. No, not so. Not necessarily? No, no. my parents are educators as well. My, oh, okay. Both my father and my mother retired in the school system where my father had the privilege, I had the privilege of 
being a student with my father and my mother. And How interesting is yeah. that? Mm -hmm. so, so, but as you, uh, now you came though from uh, what department? Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. I was an executive for the U.S. Department of Agriculture for okay. many years. Okay, so how do you relate that to what you're doing now? <laughs> well, it, it's actually, when you grew up, yeah, I had an opportunity to mm -hmm. say again. I said it actually works well because he has the management side of it. Yeah. Yeah, I so, thought, and as you were saying earlier, <laughs> how do you work together? You have to find your strengths, yes. and, and you got to know what your weaknesses are, your challenges. My challenge is management. I do not like to do the paperwork. I don't like sitting in the office. I like to be hands-on with the children. I like to be hands on with my parents. I don't want to do payroll. I do not want to do um, workers' comp, right. whatever yes. else. Yes. So, in that respect, William is amazing in those areas, and he he's got those management that skill set to handle it very well. So it sounds like you manage, uh, you balance each other quite well. Yes. That's, that's good. So, uh, what are your standards for the for the students who come in? What what's the some of the criteria? Actually, we are um, we're a very inclusive center. So, um, when children come in, honestly, um, we we just want anyone who is willing, any child is willing to come in here, and any parent or family that just wants the very best for their children. There there really is no. Stand, I would say um, any kind of criteria that they could not be admitted or whatnot. We want everyone, you know, and we just take them where they are and we move forward from there. That's right. To the so, full potential. So with you all, this this is just an amazing operation. I find. Uh, what suggestions would you all give to someone who might have an idea to start a child care center, daycare child care center? I always tell people to pursue their passion. If they don't have a love for what they're doing, it's not going to be successful. Um, she stays in here all during the night, <laughs> and I have to really force her to leave. And she's here most of the time, just like I am, early in the mornings. Mm -hmm. We come and we go, but we sacrifice a lot of our time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have it in your heart to do the work, then you're not going to be successful. I believe it that you do something you truly love, you don't work a day in your life. So we're not working. So we. Exactly. We consider ourselves retired, really. Mm -hmm. So we're doing God's work. We're doing what we enjoy doing. Yes. And it comes easy to us. That's I concur, yes. I, I always tell him, I said, this isn't even like a job to me at all. I could do this without getting one penny. Do it. And I could come every day and have this. And that's what I have a problem. We gotta, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have money on this. So she would have every child in here free. Yes. But yeah, she that's pushes true. me all the time. We need to give this person a scholarship. We need to give that yeah. person a scholarship. Yeah. I said, okay, hey, let's get it written down, and, you know, because they'll <laughs> take a scholarship important. and run with it. Mm -hmm. So yes. we have parameters in which we have to work with. We have employees that need mm -hmm. to be paid. Yeah. We have insurances. Everything in a business that has to be paid yeah. and taken care of. She's oblivious to that. Most of the time. <laughs> but then, yet I have to come in real early. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. We still have these obligations yes. to yes. take yes. care of. So, but yeah, she's yeah. truly driven by the passion of making sure that these kids learn mm -hmm. and that they are better That's when true. they leave. And, That's and I will also say we we named the building after my grandmother, who uh -huh. was an educator as well, and she operated one of the last one-room schoolhouses they um, in Pauley's Island, South Carolina, and. Um, just having her name on the business also is definitely a driving force that makes us want to just exceed all expectations with our kids, with our program. We just always want it to be a very positive. We feel that we have a nice positive reputation. Um, we just celebrated 10 years here um, at Ruby's amazing. Academy and awesome. we want to continue to grow and continue to um, just expand the program. So you have three children of your own? Yes, we do. <laughs> you had the idea to start it because your own children needed quality mm -hmm. care. That's correct. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And how old are your children? Oh, goodness. Our oldest is 20, and he's a um, college student at UNC, Charlotte. Our second child, she's um, oh, 17 now, yeah. senior in high school. Yeah. And then our youngest is a freshman in high school. That yes. is incredible. <laughs> I am so happy that I was able to speak with you all. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Again, this is Sharon Benjamin for Secrets for a Successful Life, having a wonderful conversation <laughs> with William and Audrey and Ray, owners of Ruby's Academy in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much.
Yes. Listen, please it. connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channels at Secrets for a Successful Life, Sharon Benjamin, and Randall and Sharon Benjamin. Again, thank you for joining us for Secrets for a Successful Life. See you next time.